Hey guys, Finya, that is of course F Y double N. And yeah, match week five predictions. Once again, sorry I missed last week. Of course, busy with exams, those fun things. Uh, so I wasn't able to upload it last week. So I am so, so sorry about that. But yeah, match week five is coming up. And at the end of this video, or at the end of prediction, uh, predicting all the results, I will be adding my Premier League fantasy team just so that you can see which stars I think will really shine this week and who I think will do super well. Um, yeah, but let's get straight into the result predictions for match week five. First up is Liverpool versus Newcastle. I think Newcastle has potential to do well. They're doing, they're starting the season much better than I thought they would. Um, yeah, I didn't actually expect much of them, but overall Liverpool's looking very, very strong. Well, the best word I can say, but uh, will describe this was boom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have Allison back yet, but with that defense, with that attack, I mean, they haven't lost or drawn a game yet in this Premier League season. So I can see it being a 2 0 win for Liverpool, and I can really see them shining through there. And if you guys haven't seen, I've just made and uploaded a video a day or two ago about, um, about the best former Liverpool players still playing football. I had so much fun making that video. I mean, look, it took hours to make, but yeah, I absolutely loved it so, so much. And by the way, guys, if you do enjoy my content, please do subscribe. I'm so close to 200 subscribers and I'm really loving making videos lately now let's get into the second game Brighton versus Burnley look it could go either way really I mean when Brighton uh, Brighton really has moments to shine I thought both teams would be dreadful this season um I really did uh, think that I mean Brighton has really shown strong on counter attacks with their pace and just overall Burnley's been very physical this season but I think it's going to be really really close I think Burnley's just going to get a 1-0 win um yeah I think they're just going to get away with with it. Next up is Manchester United versus Leicester. My boys, as I said, it's really hard being a Manchester United fan because it hurts being so emotionally driven to follow this team, especially because when it seems like they're doing well, they end up flopping and it hurts me so much. Does somebody need a lambie uh, But at the end of the day, I can see them getting a 1-0 win. Yeah, it's against Maguire's old team. Um, if they do score, it's going to be the, from the likes of Vardy or Madison because their pace ends up getting around our defence. But I think we're going to get a clean sheet here at Manchester United. If one Bissaka comes back, it's going to be very important. He has a 75% chance of playing, apparently, uh, which, of course, I mean, I would love it if he could play because otherwise it's him and Shaw out. We've just gotten rid of Damian. Uh, Delo's injured as well, so fullbacks were really messed up then if we don't have that. Uh, but overall, I really do see Manchester United not necessarily picking up on form but scraping away with a win but it being closer than Manchester United would like and of course let's get straight into the next one with a 1-0 win to Southampton versus Sheffield United I ah, look both teams are very very close to each other I feel look Sheffield is really I mean consider me impressed with how they've played so far this season I mean they've actually done really really well um, overall I also think Southampton's doing pretty well no it's not because of their result versus Manchester United um, but overall I can really see Southampton just pulling it away with it maybe Shea Adams can get a goal for them maybe he can really step up to the plate for Southampton um, yeah but overall I think it's going to be a very close match it's going to be one goal either way whoever does end up winning it uh, it's just going to be a 1-0 win to whoever does win it and this time I say it's going to be Southampton the next one is a bit of a tricky one in terms of it is Spurs versus Crystal Palace look Crystal Palace really can shine and no once again it's not because of Manchester United um, I really do see um, uh, Spurs getting a 3-1 win originally I wrote that they'll get a 3-2 win but I think it's just going to be a 3-1 win once again Spurs super strong um, but it has the ability to really bottle it I mean that's what Spurs about isn't it it's not very nice they really have the ability to bottle it uh, but I think they will get a 3-1 win I think they will concede a goal because their defense always seems to let unnecessary goals in there has always been a problem for them um, yeah but let's really do hope for better things for Spurs um, yeah but once again I think it's just gonna be a 3-1 win I think it's gonna be actually a pretty comfortable win for Spurs Wolves versus Chelsea now this is a really tricky one because I mean let's be honest Chelsea you haven't really shown up have you um, well, yet again Again, Wolves have just gotten draw after draw after draw, um, and it's really it is a really tricky one to say. Um, 
I really, look, it could go either way. I mean, Wolves could win, Chelsea could win. I mean, it could really be a draw. I'm really voting for a draw or a win to Wolves. But at the end of the day, I think it's just going to be a win to Chelsea. I think it's going to be a 2-1 win to Chelsea. Let's be honest, it's going to probably be goals from Abraham and Mount, something along the lines of that. I think the youngsters have really shown their spirit for the Chelsea team. Um, yeah, let's see if Frank Lampard can really show this team who's boss with the uh, Chelsea team and get a second win of the season. Next up, Norwich versus City. Ooh, this is going to be a good one. Um, I think it's going to be very similar to both of their opening games. I think Norwich are going to get absolutely destroyed. I think City is absolutely going to dominate. Um, yeah, it's going to be a super tricky one. I think it's going to be a 4-1 win to City. Uh, but I do think Puki is going to get a goal for Norwich. I think he's like really just come out of nowhere. He's done absolutely amazing. Um, that seems to be my new favorite phrase um, as of late. Um, yeah, but I do think City is going to dominate, especially with Kevin De Bruyne and Sterling, who both did phenomenal jobs on the international break. I mean, Sterling with a goal, and of course, Kevin De Bruyne within 23 minutes getting three assists, and then later in the game getting a goal. I cannot not see City just absolutely dominate this one. Which, of course, if you guys have not seen my Premier League prediction video, I mean, it's only five weeks in to the Premier League, but guys, go check out where I think everyone will end up on the table. Next up is Bournemouth versus Everton. Bournemouth versus Everton, it's going to be an interesting one, but I think it's going to be a 3-0 win to Everton. I know, I know, I know, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, look, as much as Bournemouth really has the opportunity to shine as a team, I just see the pace and the stamina and just everything about Everton being too much for for Bournemouth, but at the same time, Everton's a bit like Spurs in terms of they have a good team, but they have the ability to bottle it. Um, but yeah, I just think that's going to be the shocking result of the week. It's going to be a 3-0 win to Everton. Especially with how good Pickford is. I mean, Pickford on the international break was, I mean, sublime. I mean, wow. Wow. Second loss is Watford versus Arsenal. I mean, pff, Arsenal has... I mean, look, those have the ability to bottle it. They could seriously impress. At the same time, Watford has been woeful. They've just gotten a new manager because they've uh, sacked Garcia. It's going to be a really weird one because I don't think they're going to adjust to a new manager quite yet. I do think it's going to be a 2-0 win. Whether it's Pepe and Aubameyang to score or whoever. I mean, Aubameyang definitely will score. Let's be honest, it just seems to be the thing for, for Arsenal is Aubameyang will score. The last prediction for the match week is Villa versus West Ham. I think this is going to be a 2-0. I mean, this could be a shock to most people. I think it's going to be a 2-0 win to Villa. I mean, Villa, I think the defense is actually pretty strong, much stronger than we thought. Midfield is really good when it comes to playing the ball up forward to the attackers. And I think they could get their first comfortable win of the season with the 2-0 over West Ham. I mean, West Ham could really pull it off with Haller at the top, but overall, I do see it being going Villa's way. Now for my fantasy team, my fantasy team is going to start off, well, this is my fantasy team. Team, I know it's pretty good, pretty strong, but once again, nothing in life is I mean, predictable to the point where you could get it exact. I'm going to put De Gea in goal purely because if my prediction is right, now I'm basing all of my fantasy team off of my predictions, obviously, um, is if United end up getting a clean sheet, those are points towards De Gea, and I do see De Gea getting some serious bonus points there. In defense, one Bissaka, if he plays once again, there's a 75% chance he will play, but for one, it's a risk I'm willing to take. Uh, my, uh, my vice captain is Virgil van Dijk. Um, I think he's really, if they end up getting a 2 0 win over Newcastle, serious points for him there once again. And uh, once again, I just think Virgil van Dijk will, yeah, just in any case, get points in this team. Other defender is Socrates, the other centre back. Um, not necessarily because I think he's the second best in the league or whatever. Purely because, once again, if Arsenal get a clean sheet, I think it'll go points towards Socrates' way. Um, if he can handle his aggression, you know him, he always gets yellow cards, red cards. He's very unstable when it comes to defence, but at the same time, he's the points in my team that would go against or would go to Arsenal. 
My last defender is Danny Rose. Um, yeah, whether he starts or not, because I mean, they're very odd with who they start at Spurs in the flank position. But I think Danny Rose could seriously get points once again. It is if Spurs ends up getting this 3 1 win. I mean, if they get a clean sheet, Danny Rose gets points. If they get attack, I think he'll probably get points because he's very good at running up and making those attacking runs as a modern day fullback, which is what modern day fullbacks have developed to do. Midfield, Kevin De Bruyne. As I said, I don't really have to. Um, I don't really have to explain this one. I mean, he's done well, super well for City. I mean, I didn't think he would come back this strong after last season's injury, but wow, has he come back stronger than ever? I mean, for Belgium, for City, there's no way he won't get points. And my next midfielder is Sterling. He is the captain of the team, and I'll explain why. Um, I've really put him as captain and Virgil van Dijk as vice captain. I have played this week my triple captain points because I mean I think Liverpool are going to dominate this week and I think City are going to dominate this week. Therefore if I get triple points for van Dijk and for Sterling those are just points, points, points. Um, yeah I think that's that's where my points this week are going to come in from. My uh, third midfielder is Madison for Leicester because let's say you, things don't go United's way and Leicester do end up winning it's going to be an assist or goal from Madison I mean almost guaranteed um, yeah so those are just my safety points there and once again Madison overall is just a really good player last midfielder is Mason Mount for Chelsea those are my Chelsea points in the team um, yeah once again if Chelsea end up getting this win it's going to be from Abraham or from Mount I think the youth are really going to shine in this team I think Mount is such a complete player um, I mean Chelsea probably I mean are so glad that they only put him out on loan instead of giving him away um, yeah but let's see how he performs for Chelsea my attackers, Puki, for uh, Norwich, I mean, I'm not going to have to justify it. I'm not going to have to explain it. I mean, I think anyone in their right mind would probably put him in in any other circumstance. I mean, yes, I said Norwich are going to lose 4-1, but I think that one goal for Norwich is going to come from Puki. And I think um, just in case things do go south for City, which is very unlikely, Puki is going to be the one to get the points for them. My last attack is Rash, but just because, listen here, I think he's going to be the one getting the winning goal versus Leicester. Yes, he hasn't really been able to shine properly, so far this season um look i think he was very unlucky not to get that penalty the other week uh, but yet again you can't get them all and i'm not going to say yeah i mean he should totally be taken off for penalties because he's only ever missed one penalty in his senior career for manchester united so i'm still going to have to put rashford up there just because i think he has that ability to score you serious? My bench has to be Heaton from Aston Villa. I think if they end up getting the 2 uh, no win, it's going to be a clean sheet for him. And I really do see him playing a big part in that. Along with my defender on the bench in Mings, I think he's also obviously Aston Villa defender. I think he's going to get points there on the defense for Aston Villa. Uh, Bernard from Everton, as I said, that pacey attack that Everton has, lots of that comes from Bernard. And he's going to get some serious points there. And lastly is Adams. As I said, I think he could score for Southampton. He he could be the one getting that winning goal and if so i've gained massive points this week now guys those are my match week predictions this week i hope you have enjoyed it tell me what you think about it of course i'm close to 200 subscribers i'm on 190 at the time of recording so please do help me out share subscribe do whatever you can and help me reach that goal thank you so much i appreciate it lots and i will see you next time stay awesome love all of you this is finn fywn